Hi everyone, I'm Jose and I'm in one of Manhattan's largest neighborhoods, Washington Heights, a segment of some of the most culturally diverse areas within the city. On this tour, we'll discover the fascinating history hidden throughout the large buildings of the Heights. We'll explore some of the stunning visuals of the city and the bridge that towers over the neighborhood. And we'll dive into the story and culture of the area. So let's go on tour to Uptown Manhattan and experience Washington Heights. This is Washington Heights in Upper Manhattan, and I'm currently at Bennett Park, the highest natural point on the island at 265 feet or 81 meters above sea level. The areas throughout Upper Manhattan remain some of the hilliest in the city, and this park further showcases the importance of the territory. Bennett Park was named after James Gordon Bennett, the founder of the New York Herald newspaper, but the real importance of the park comes way before Bennett's time. This site was once the home to Fort Washington, one of several fortifications throughout the city created by George Washington to defend against the British. As the Revolutionary War spread across the colonies, Washington Heights became a battlefield in which the Battle of Fort Washington took place. The American troops led by Robert McGaw were defeated and captured by the British. This would become the last of General Washington's disastrous defeats in New York, making him retreat across New Jersey to Pennsylvania. And today, it's a compressed utopia of brick and high-rises that transforms the battlefield into Washington Heights. Our journey into Washington Heights begins at the George Washington Bridge by the Hudson River. We head to the lower portion of Washington Heights, to the Fort Washington Park, where the busy traffic from the bridge and Henry Hudson Parkway echo through the bricks of the buildings. And I cross over the parkway through the elevated platform, observing the messages from the community. Washington Heights is a diversified neighborhood in Upper Manhattan that's become even more famous with a Broadway play and film by Lynn manuel Miranda. And the trails beneath the bridge show us the beautiful giant connecting the state of New Jersey to New York City. The George Washington Bridge is an integral part of the neighborhood where it can be seen all throughout its streets. It connects New Jersey and Western America to New York City. The bridge was once the largest in America, and it still holds the record of the world's busiest. The towering George Washington Bridge, a historic bridge able to withstand the strong currents and winds of this winter day. Beneath the bridge lies another story, a hidden beauty of vintage Manhattan. And we see neighborhood residents enjoying the trails of the park. Under George Washington Bridge is a beautiful lighthouse that pulls me in with curiosity. The little red lighthouse was a beacon for the ships coming from places like Albany. The lighthouse was originally constructed in Sandy Hook, New Jersey, but was decommissioned in 1917. At the time, ship captains demanded stronger lights while traveling the treacherous waters of the Hudson. In 1921, the U.S. Coast Guard reconstructed the lighthouse for this part of Washington Heights, originally known as Jeffrey's Hook. The Coast Guard went on to give the lighthouse to the city, and it became part of the National Registry. But our adventure leads us to the people of the Heights, and the streets contain so many hidden stories.
So Washington Heights is called Little Dominican Republic because it has the highest population of Dominicans across anywhere in the United States. Also, it has a big Jewish population. So how much do you know about the Dominican Republic? One of two countries in the island of Hispaniola. It was one of the first islands where Christopher Columbus landed and would frequently return for the name of Spain and almost wiped out the native Taino Indians. But in the Dominican Republic, there's a massive shrine dedicated to Columbus called the Faro de Colón. As a Dominican born in the capital, it was part of my journey to understand our history. Dominicans are a dominant force in the sport of baseball, where American leagues remain in close partnerships. And we're known for our fantastic cuisine, with one of our most popular fruit being the plantain. The beaches are crystal clear blue, becoming the biggest touristic nation in the Caribbean and one of the top grossing throughout Latin America. As I take the cable car to the mountains of Puerto Plata, you can see the beautiful greenery of this tropical island. The Dominican Republic has some of the most varied landscapes and also contains the highest peaks within the Caribbean. So from all the way up here, we can see the edge of the town. Trying to conquer this fear of heights. Terrible. Let's branch out into the neighborhood of Washington Heights, a place which I'm very familiar with from my childhood. The Heights was given the title of Little Dominican Republic. Dominican residents only make up 1% of America's population. But in this large concentration of Washington Heights, we make up the majority. Throughout the streets, you immediately witness the Dominican entrepreneurship, where mom and pop shops are selling all types of merchandise. We see businesses and restaurants tailored to bring that feeling of family and home. And the best part of walking these streets is interacting with the people and seeing big box brands cater to the neighborhood. Washington Heights began its ties to the Dominican Republic in 1613, when a Dominican known as Juan Rodriguez landed with a crew of a Dutch ship. Rodriguez was stationed in the former New Amsterdam until 1614. And then there's Ellis Island, where at least 50,000 Dominican immigrants passed through the terminal. While the temperatures begin to drop, our vibrant personalities keep the streets flowing and the smells of the great foods activate my senses. I'm trying to resist the urge, but I haven't had a Johnny cake since I was a kid. I haven't had a Johnny cake. I, I can't even tell you the last time, but look at the size of this guy. Super crunchy. Mm. This is the best on a Saturday morning. This is a scenario of the steepness that makes up the geography of Washington Heights. So when we visited Inwood, one of the things I said was that Upper Manhattan was very hilly and Washington Heights is no exception. As the holidays transform the month of December, we see the Jewish community put up their menorah. The Jewish and Washington Heights trace back to the Revolutionary War with soldiers at the Battle of Fort Washington. This is such an amazing part of New York City, a small street straight out of a vintage postcard of what Manhattan used to look like. This street was a mail delivery service that started here and went straight to Boston. This little area, frozen in time, is Sylvan's Terrace, the former remains of Upper Manhattan's farmland history. As the low rises began to reshape neighborhoods like Inwood and Washington Heights, little homes like this became forgotten icons. 
So right behind me is the oldest house in all of Manhattan, the Morris Jumel Mansion. The mansion once belonged to Roger Morris, a British military officer who left for England at the start of the Revolutionary War, in which George Washington occupied the mansion as a headquarter during his campaign of New York. The Morris Jumel Mansion was constructed in 1765, witnessing the birth and transformation of New York City. After its residence of Morris and George Washington, the mansion was owned by Eliza and Stephen Jumel. Eliza was also married to the famed Aaron Burr, American Vice President and the man who shot Alexander Hamilton. As I walk around the mansion, I'm left fascinated by the history these grounds entail. And if you pay a visit, you can stop by the museum inside the mansion, which is part of the Jumel Terrace Historic District. Washington Heights is home to Columbia University, one of the most prestigious universities in the world, and also the oldest higher education institution in the state of New York. Columbia University was founded in 1754, before the Declaration of Independence, and at least seven of America's founding fathers attended the university as part of its staff. Columbia University is the fifth oldest higher education institution in America, established by a royal charter under King George II of Great Britain. Washington Heights is truly a visual delight. When it comes to architecture, the buildings are all different and span across several architectural styles. I can't tell you the last time I seen a handball court. Growing up in New York City during the summers, this is where I would spend my Saturday mornings. Protruding from the low rises of Washington Heights are four large buildings called the Bridge Apartments. They sit above a platform over the Manhattan Expressway below. 32-story buildings that become the tallest in the neighborhood, housing up to 4,000 residents. I'm on leave, I'm on leave. <laughs> So pardon for the loud noise, but right here is the Trans-Manhattan Expressway. All the cars that come off the bridge pass through here to the other boroughs. The Trans-Manhattan Expressway opened in 1960, one year before the buildings. And the expressway traverses over 280 vehicles on a daily basis. It's known as one of the most busiest and congested expressways in America. But across the other side of Washington Heights is a familiar friend, the High Bridge Tower, which overlooks the Bronx across the Harlem River Drive. A tower that stands at 200 feet tall and once held a 47,000 gallon water tank to feed the former Croton Aqueduct. From this view, we can look further down into the neighborhood and make out the traffic going uptown. As I look at the high bridge below, I reminisce about my tour of the Bronx. So New York City is known as New Amsterdam, and especially in Washington Heights, you can see the building's resemblance to Holland. As this tour winds down, I've come to a better understanding of a neighborhood I've visited so many times throughout my life. And as I take a walk up the grand staircase, I feel like this was just a small glimpse of the real Washington Heights. Back to downtown. 
Washington Heights fully embodies the slogan of New York City, truly becoming a melting pot of diversified history, making it one of the most unique areas within Manhattan. It contains such a mixture of diversity, a prominent role in the Revolutionary War, a blueprint to the architectural design that became New York City, and truly personifies the city that never sleeps. I'm Jose, and if you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe, give it a thumbs up, and share. If you want to see more adventures in the city of New York, please stay tuned for the following video. Until next time.